Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is my video on a shift register. This is our first project, and it uses concepts from uh, our last video, which is the flip-flops and latches. And I'm just going to show you what it does first before I get started on how to build it. So what it is, is... So, uh, just a sec, I'm going to reset it, then I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I got it all reset. So as you can see, every single one of these LEDs is uh, lit up, and the data right now is on off. So when I press this button, it'll activate the clock, and it will make that one uh, black, and then I turn this one to on. Now what do you think it's going to do? Well what it does is it turns that one to black and that one onto light again. And then if I turn it off, it'll turn the one past the one that's off right now to off, that one to on, that one to off, and so on and so on. So like if I do on right now, it'll move the sig signal up one again. So yeah, that's how it works. It's like not that complicated, and this is used in actual electronics. Like if you probably go onto Google Images and look up integrated circuit, You'll see a picture of a little black thing. I have one around here, but I'm not going to get it out because it's, uh, oh, let me s nah, I don't have it handy. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm not going to make a diagram on like paint because I don't know, or because Fraps isn't working with desktop anymore, my version of Fraps. I'll get that working. So I made one in Minecraft to kind of show you what it is. So the blue equals a D flip-flop, so, the, or the, uh, what do they call it? Cyan or cyan. They, so cyan is D flip flops. Green is uh, data input, and purple is clock input. So what it does is it takes the data from the input or from the data input, and it puts it in there, and then you do or, uh, and it activates that line, and then you clock it so that it will copy that data right there. And then you uh, change that, clock it again, and this one will copy the data coming out of this one. And then after this one has it copied, this one will copy this data. And then clock it again, this one will copy this data, this one will copy this data, this one will copy this data. So that's how it works. So what you need to do, to, I'm going to try to cut down this video because I've already shown, or I'll just show you how to build a D flip flop, I guess. And then you can, uh, and this is a 6-bit one that I've built. You can make it as big or as short as you want. So I find that the easiest way to build this is uh, build all your D flip-flops with some space in between. And uh, you take your clock and you put it in a line. Usually out here I try to make mine a little bit more compact. And you pretty far out, dep depending on how many flip-flops you're going to have, and just go all the way the length of how of your lined up flip-flops. You can uh, add more on later. And what I find is the best to do is uh, I built this little indicator thing, so it inverts it right here, and so when this is off, that is also off, and when this is on, that is also on. So, yeah. Um, you don't have to do that, you can just have a simple switch. So th this is the data going in the first flip-flop. This is the data coming out of the first flip-flop. So this is the signal and this goes into the next one. This same here, it goes out and then in. Out, in, out, in, out, in. And the clock goes all the way down here and we use repeaters as delays so that that one will have enough time to copy this signal before this one changes. So, because if that one changes before this one copies it, you'll have a problem. So what I find is best to do is put one repeater with four ticks on it, or all the way, uh, for your last one. And some you'll have to do some adjusting. And then, like I had to do an adjusting here and add another repeater with one tick on it. And uh, I find that it's best to, uh, for every flip-flop, down the line towards your input, you add one more repeater with full ticks, or if you've had to do some adjusting, like right here, I have three with one tick, and here I had two and one with one tick. So right here, I had to do some more adjusting, and then, yeah. 
So it's not the fastest thing in the world. I'm sure that you can fine tune it to be the fastest that it can be. And right now I'll make, uh, I'm gonna pause going to the forms really quick and get the diagram next to my screen and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. You probably can't see the uh, diagram because I just have it open on a web browser. But you can just go off of what I'm about to show you to build it. So you build one there and then you go down four or five, sorry, put one there. I usually start with blocks, then I place the redstone, then I place the torches, assuming that it's one level. So kind of look at that. And then up here, go over four. And then you add two. And then up here you go. And that's all the blocks there are. And then redstone. So down there goes into that one, and then on those two, and then put two right there, one going into that one, I believe, yes, and then you put it going up there, over here, yaw, uh, coming down there, right there. I think that's all the redstone that you need, so get out torches. <clears throat> yep. So one there, one there, one there, and one there. Yeah. And then this is your data input and this is your clock input so I'm going to quickly update it so now that's off and this is the uh, inversion of the output so if that is on or if that is off that is on if this is if this is on that is off usually you don't need to use that but there might be some projects where you need to do that so I'm just gonna sit here for like a couple of seconds and let you look at that. Pause the video if you want to just look and build that. Okay, um, so that's all there is to it. Uh, I'm going to look at more simple integrated circuits that uh, I can build. If you want me to do something more traditional like a piston door, tell me. Uh, and from this, I'm thinking that I'm going to go into my ALU some more after I've done some basic uh, redstone uh, these basic redstone tutorials I'm gonna go if you haven't seen my ALU uh, go into my channel basically what it is it is, is the part of a CPU like a computer that does math it is giant um, but yeah uh, thanks for watching like I said suggest ideas comment feedback whatever uh, yeah Thanks for watching and have yourself a wonderful freaking day.